was expected, but it came a little early. Russell Wilson will be released by the Broncos. They informed him that just 18 months after they signed him to a five-year, $242 million contract. They traded five picks and three players. Russell was benched the final two games of last season by Sean Payton, and now he's free to find his next destination. Here's Shefty with the insight. His mindset is, I'm ready to go win and show people that I am the type of quarterback that I know I am. Now, it's up to another team to give him that opportunity, but somebody's going to strike out on Kirk Cousins. Somebody's not going to land Justin Fields. Somebody's going to be sitting there in the end saying, why would we not take a gamble, a roll of the dice, a dart throw on a guy who cost us nothing? And because of all those elements, I believe he comes into play in more places than people think because of all the elements surrounding his particular situation. And you could, Fowler was nodding along as he was talking. And he's yeah. going to have more interest than you thought. And by the way, Legler asked us right before the show, how old is Russell Wilson now? He's 35. I think sometimes we perceive him to be much older than that because he started as a rookie. Feels like he's been around forever. He was in the same draft class as Robert Griffin III. We got RG3 signal working just in time. Perfect. So, Robert, I'll start with you because... We know what the, now you and I talked about it this morning. There's been a narrative out there about Russell, and I think you've got a lot you want to say about it. Yeah, Greeny, I've been waiting for this conversation for quite some time. Appreciate you having me back on the show. The bottom line is Russell Wilson's a starting quarterback in the NFL. He's easily a top 20 quarterback in the NFL, and I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of hearing Russell Wilson's name get drugged through the mud. You're talking about a guy that in year one in Denver, yeah, it was a disaster. But last year, I watched every snap from the past two seasons, and Russell Wilson had a top five touchdown to interception ratio, 26 touchdowns to eight interceptions. He led the Broncos in the middle of the season to a 5-0 record and beat the likes of Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and that vaunted Browns defense. So for me, hearing everyone talk about him the way that they have, isn't doesn't really match up to the way he played and it certainly doesn't match up to the fact that Russell Wilson is a Hall of Fame quarterback he's had a Hall of Fame career already at this point in his in his timeline and he's not getting the respect that he has earned not only from a guy like Sean Payton who came in there to coach him but also from the media and you notice I said earned not deserved because Mm -hmm. life isn't fair but Russell Wilson has proven that he can play the position at a high level, and now he has an opportunity to go prove that he can still be that guy for another three, four, five years. That's, 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 that's a, a really interestingly made point and very well made on your part, and, and I would actually add to it, sometimes it feels like Sean Payton was brought in there to get rid of him. You could say he was brought in there to coach him. It, it felt <laughs> almost from the moment it started like he was brought in there to initiate that change one year after they basically gave up the sun the moon and the stars to bring him in there although harry i was listening to your radio show yesterday and you had i don't know that it's necessarily a contrary position but it was an interesting one yeah granny um from what I witnessed from Sean Payton when it came to Russell Wilson since the moment he got there, and then when we got the news yesterday that he was going to be released of his duties and the $85 million cap hit that they're going to be taking on, they didn't only dislike Russell Wilson. In my eyes, and you see on this screen right now, Sean Payton, the way he treated Russell Wilson as well, he hated Russell Wilson. And I think that was evident to see. You go to somebody during the season and ask them to take a uh, get rid of their injury clause in their contract, and you're still you still have an opportunity to contend for the playoffs. That don't tell me that you like that human being. You have a franchise quarterback and you publicly you know humiliate humiliate him on TV in front of the world. That doesn't tell me you like him. It tells me you might hate him. And then you're willing to take on that 85 million dollars in uh, cap hit by cutting Russell Wilson. I just think it was a it was a match made in hell for the Denver Broncos and also Russell Wilson by joining Sean Payton and connecting those two together. And the way Russell Wilson played last year, it was evident if he was on the Atlanta Falcons, hell, they would have made the playoffs. If he was on the Pittsburgh Steelers, they would have been better at the quarterback position. If he was with the New England Patriots, they would have been better at the quarterback position. So I don't think Russell Wilson deserved a lot of the treatment that he got from the Denver Broncos organization. 
All right, I think a lot of that is fair. So as we set the sort of table with that, now we come to our information man extraordinaire. Jeremy, you, were, you and I were just talking because Leg Legler is the best football fan you'll ever meet. He's grilling <laughs> Fowler sitting over here before the show starts. You think he's going to have a lot of options, don't you? Yes, because of the value. His free agency essentially starts today. Even though he's not going to be cut until the new league year, Denver's given him permission to go talk with teams. So that could get started in earnest. Some dominoes need to fall, Kirk Cousins, Justin Fields, etc. But it can't be overstated what kind of value he is because he can literally sign for the vet minimum because Denver's paying him $39 million. And I'm told that plan is firmly on his radar. He wants to help his new team by being a bargain. So there will be a market for that. He wants to go to a team, I'm told, to not only win, but has an infrastructure, a history of winning. Well, so give me some places we should be keeping an eye on. I'm looking at Vegas. The feeling coming out of the combine last week is that Atlanta is going to have a high pecking order. They could certainly walk away with Kirk Cousins, Baker Mayfield if available, Justin Fields. But there will be other teams that can't fill that void. I look at the Raiders, right? They haven't been in the mix on some of those top guys. They're picking 13th overall in the draft. Can they really jump into the top three? That's going to be hard. Sierra can do a Vegas residency over there, like <laughs> the Vegas lights from Devontae Adams. It makes a lot of sense to me. So, so yeah, you, you were telling um, Legler before the show that you like the, the feel of that. So the idea that he might go somewhere if he's not guaranteed a job, if he doesn't have any guaranteed money the following season, all that kind of stuff, I don't think it's questioning him in any way to say, you know what, a lot of guys might just walk away, say, I'm good here. When you hear people suggest that, RG3, what do you think? Well, Greeny, it's uh, the suggestion isn't what bothers me that he might that he on his own, you know, under his own control, walk away from the game of football. That's different than saying he's not good enough to play or that mm -hmm. no one is going to want him. I feel like right now for Russell Wilson, he's going to need a season to rehabilitate his image publicly. So I look at this as the perfect opportunity for Russell to have his Alex Smith arc. Mm. Think about Alex Smith when he went from San Fan to the Kansas City Chiefs. They ended up drafting Patrick Mahomes. He sat for a year behind Alex, and then Alex got traded to Washington and signed a $90 million-plus extension. I feel like that's where Russell Wilson is right now. So to take him to Pittsburgh, who seems like they might be ready to win now in the division with Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson and Deshaun Watson – I don't know if that's ideal. That's why everyone wants to go to Atlanta because they know that division is weak. <laughs> but my ideal fit for Russell Wilson would be the New England Patriots. I understand it's a first-time head coach and you're saying to yourself, why would you put him through the same thing you put him through with uh, uh, Hackett there, Nathaniel Hackett? But yeah. for me, it gives him an opportunity to naturally be a leader, be a stabilizing force for an organization that has a history of winning and that we all believe is going to take a quarterback in the high part of that draft, that mm -hmm. guy can learn from Russell Wilson, and Russell Wilson can, can use that to piggyback himself to a new team, which he does want to play for another four, five, six years. It's a little, you know, that's going to be into his 40s, but that's what he wants to do. I think he has to reestablish himself this year. Well, look, I mean, I think that the definition of old for a quarterback has been rewritten at this point. Tom Brady playing till he was 45. Aaron Rodgers now playing into his 40s. Guys are doing it, and it makes sense. And you see Harry's picks there, Falcon Steelers. We'll see which way they wind up going. Very quickly, one other piece of big news here. Let me just let Jeremy run through all the franchise tag stories of the day because today is the deadline for this. You see it there. Less than eight hours. Let's go through some of the hot spots here starting in Kansas City. Yes, Legereus Sneed, cornerback star, is franchise tagged. He's under contract now for $19.8 million next year, but the Chiefs are working on a potential tag and trade, sending him mm. to a new team. Detroit is believed to be in the high-end cornerback market. They're trying to get over the hump. Miami is a potential option. So the Chiefs are trying right now to re-sign Chris Jones mm -hmm. to a deal that could be close to $30 million a year while they're dealing with this Sneed situation. So it's very much one to watch. And you go to Cincinnati, T. Higgins, he already has the franchise tag with the Bengals. He's in the plans for 2024 at around $22 million. But I'm told he wants a long-term deal. Mm -hmm. This is not necessarily a cordial situation at the moment because this is a player who really would be a number one receiver on a lot of teams. He's set to get paid. It's uncertain whether the Bengals are willing to pay him what he wants. Teams will be in the market for him. They're going to probably dangle some trade picks to see if they can acquire him mm -hmm. to see if the Bengals move off him and actually make that move. And you got the New York Giants today with Saquon Barkley. The expectation at large is that he will not be franchise tagged. That number would be about $12 million. That's a little steep 
for the running back position at this point. But I'm also told the Giants haven't totally taken it off the table. They've been evaluating Saquon Barkley and their star safety, Xavier McKinney. So possibly they put the tag on one of them, but it's largely not expected. And Barkley will have suitors. He'll be the top option among a loaded running back free agent. And off he goes. A little